What on earth is that? It's a journey into comics network production! Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Brought to you by the power of the Journey Into Comics Network. This is the Journey Into Comics Podcast. The show that's 100% dedicated to everything nerd. With your hosts, the Podfather, Nate Phillips, the Podmaster, Brandon Stone, and the Journey Into Comics Network stepdad, Tyler McLaughlin. Time to make the chibi chunk. 30 seconds. Hey. Excellent. Finally. What did you do? <laughs> and here we go. Can somebody tell me what kind of a world we live in where a man dressed up as a bat gets all of my press? This town needs an enema. What's up, true believers? Welcome back to another episode of Journey into Comics. This is Journey into Comics 318. I am your host, Nate. Today, joining me once again, the Journey into Comics Network stepdad. So nice, we named him twice. TYTY, welcome back to the show. How's it going? Uh, it's good. Uh, I'm sorry that I just abruptly left. <laughs> um, no, no, no don't last... be sorry. You had like shit thrust upon you quite literally i feel like um i mean what's it been like five well i mean it's been what like five or six episodes now at this point uh i was gonna say four but because uh, i think this would have marked five had you not okay. been on because it's been right it, about a month yeah i thought it was um along those lines uh i went to work uh you know, on a, on like a, a Friday, it was on a Friday actually, um, on a Friday morning. And, uh, my boss is like, Hey, uh, how would you feel about going to work in somewhere else? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and I was like, uh, well, um, you know, I'm not really vibing that because I <laughs> like, I like working for, for you. Uh, and he's like, well, um, they need help, and uh, I kind of just gave you a choice as a courtesy. So, uh, good luck to you, and you start on Monday. So, uh, I did that. Um, that was the most recent development, but before that, I had a baby, dude. And that's the last, that's actually the last time I saw you was at the um the diaper party which was an amazing time and yeah you guys brando, all you guys killed it i mean brando and i you know got to kind of like reminisce and talk about the party itself here on the show which was a lot of fun but just um <clears throat> to quickly recap between you and i man it was really an honor and a pl- privilege to be there it was a great time the food was amazing those hot dogs were insane <laughs> the the different various games we all got to play were amazing and hilarious i really want to have like a literal putter ball tournament where we're all like in the game and, and, and trying to, you know, uh, win or whatever, but all when in I all, kept, man, it was I, a great time. Well, I, I, I appreciate scholar and I appreciate all of you guys, uh, coming and supporting us. You know, I, I, everyone that I invited, I, I created a, a Facebook messenger, uh, like thread. And I was like, you know, all of you like obviously are our friends. Um, but I invited everybody in this group, for a reason because more so especially with me you know i've talked about it a little bit on this show i've talked about it on podcastrophy um you know especially with everything that the network you know being a part of the network as it's continued to grow and and you know every year i feel like i almost feel like we we scrap it and we start entirely over again and you know we're always we're always changing and trying to adapt like you guys are as much a part of my family, if not more than my actual family. Um, 
So, you know, we, we obviously, it, it made us feel incredible um, for all you guys to come and, 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 you know, spend the the day and the evening and those fucking hot dogs, man. Every, everybody sleeps on hot dogs. You know, if I go to a cookout and somebody's like, yeah, all I've got is hot dogs. Normally I'm going to be pretty pissed because it's like bar s hot dogs Not that day though it, it's bar s hot dogs and like uh like generic wonder bread buns that it's like like the consistency of copy paper you know what i mean like like the bottom of the barrel Dude, buns but those it's like go when you go to like a like an NCAA football game and you get a hot dog and it's wrapped in the foil and the bun is soggy, but you're not sure why yeah. it's soggy until you realize that it's the boiled hot dog water oh, that yeah. is seeped into the fucking bun. And yeah. you're just like, ah, oh, this is it's paste. I got <laughs> yeah. However, I, I got, these were not I got those hot, hot dog. dogs. Hot, yeah, they're they're quarter pound all beef hot dogs. Um you know, you, like failed McDonald's invention. Like they were like, "Hey, we're gonna do the quarter pound hot dog," and someone's like, "No, that's a terrible idea. Don't just pass on it." Yeah, no, they're they're. I mean, they're great. Uh, you know, I like. I was just sitting here brainstorming one day, and I was like, "You know what? Why don't we do a fucking hot dog party? You know, that'll be cool." I got some jardinier. No one used it, which I don't. Which doesn't matter to me, but it's like just like a like a straight up fucking hot dog party. But the star of the show, for sure, I told Nick, like, I took Putterball back the, the following morning, and I was like, hey, man, like, we got to talk about this because, first of all, it's one of those things, like, why didn't we come up with this? Jeez, because we could have made some brilliant. serious dough. But also, that's, like, one of the most, like, obviously, like, I had a shitty yard, and it's all, like, bumpy, you know, nothing's flat. But it's like you get you get like twenty or thirty people, and you get like a putterball tournament, and you know oh, everybody. Yeah. There's only two people putting at a time, so you get uh, everybody. Like, it's like a built-in crowd, dude. Yeah, Literally, yeah. you have like a built-in tournament with like so everybody's cheering and booing for people. You get fan favorites. It kind of was starting to happen. I think had we had a little bit more time and and a little bit had we. Let me rephrase that. Had we put it in an area of the yard that was flat enough, we would have finished games sooner, which would have allowed us to play more games. But it right. was increasingly difficult with where the placement of the board was. But it was great. Um, you know, thanks to Nick, obviously, for bringing it. Um, but, you know, games like games like Secret Hitler and, uh, you know, I've, I've told I, – I played Weird Doomed um, that first game that we played – like last year, the year before, um, just like on a random Saturday morning, we all went over to Dave Linder's house just for like a like a board game day. And he's like, "Hey, Sweet. I just got I just got this game. It's pretty cool." And we played that game for like four fucking hours, you know. And each game is only fifteen minutes long, um, so you can get a lot of games Getting in. It in, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's like games like part. I hate calling them party games because they're obviously a little bit. Like, it's not just, like, flip cup and, and fucking dumb shit like that, you know? But you got to actually think, and, you know, there's some tact. and But it, it was a great day, and, you know, fast forward uh, uh, today or yesterday uh, was actually supposed to be Juno's uh, birthday. Legitimate birthday. Today. It's today. Yeah. Today, yeah. And then she comes, mm -hmm. I mean, she comes three weeks early or three weeks early. Um, so we've got three, three extra weeks of snuggles and, and, uh, and three extra three weeks of weeks diaper of changes. Yeah. Well, luckily, uh, I don't know how, but, uh, I've gotten lucky enough two two time, two kids in a row that this one sleeps at night. Wow. I mean, Whoa. like, like Juno just sleeps like Ruby. Ruby would scream all day and then sleep all night. Juno just sleeps. Like nice. just, she sleeps during the day. She sleeps at night. Like she doesn't, 
she doesn't cry or like throw fit like oh not obviously a, not I, a fussy baby that's great if you're looking at the video currently i look like i'm about to pass out uh from sleep exhaustion that's because i ate enough chips and salsa to kill like a small like a like a juvenile sperm whale would be dead right now um because of the amount of carbohydrates and tomato that's in my stomach but yeah so everybody's good everybody's healthy uh skylar kicked ass we didn't have to stay in the hospital extra long the hospital food was fucking good wow yeah we, did we transfer to earth too like i know it's still 2020 but i'm used to so used to hearing bad news that mm -hmm. to hear you have a pleasant experience and like not only have a pleasant experience your kid came three weeks early they're very very healthy uh not crying and not being uh, you know problematic in the home i hope ruby's having a nice time not acclimating and all that she is that's great man so i mean it's like it's it's really refreshing to hear hopeful news in 2020 and and, and to couple hopeful news <clears throat> this will totally tangent the show because i don't know if you've even seen the show but like dexter's coming back yeah, I'm actually glad that you brought that up because, um, you know, you shared that and, like, the majority of the internet shared that the other day. And I only reacted one time, but I reacted, I think, to the first thing that you shared, and I was like, why? Just let it, just let it go. Like, obviously, you know, I, I, I think this is, this is a good conversation to have, especially between you and I, because we both love the show so much. Sure, it's like, absolutely. It's like the ending was so awful and so well, bad. And, and that whole last season was so awful. Well, you could some could say the last two seasons. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's I think that my bigger issue with season seven isn't necessarily the story they told, but mm -hmm. that they made Deb fall in love with Dex when they were real life couple breaking up. And it's like you, so you forced them to have interaction like yeah. that when they're a brother sister tandem. And I know it's not blood, I get it, I understand. But like the Hannah McKay story is kind of, you know, really, it was like they took a dip after. And how do you follow Trinity? You can't. So mm -hmm. season five with Lumen, it's like kind of a dipping point for the show. But I thought the Travis Marshall season, season six, where the four horsemen of the apocalypse happened and there's the whole church sequence. And uh, I cannot remember that fucking amazing actor's name who was in uh, that season. The old dude. You I mean, you you had to ask because I was getting ready to say it. And of course, now I can't remember his <laughs> name off the top of my head. But, you know, I I. You know, not just you and I, Brandon and I have talked about it a lot, too, especially, you know, when we work together. We talked about a lot of the shit like this. Like, I think for a lot of of popular television shows, they get wrapped up in super deep narratives and shock value. And especially when you get, I mean, when you get five five seasons of a television, like, let's step away from stuff like Friends and Seinfeld and and um um you know shows like that that have like 20 seasons 25 seasons uh, obviously friends doesn't have 25 seasons but like the simpsons has like 35 seasons okay yeah when legacy a, shows that have a maybe right. a really long arc when it's when it's a a serious a more serious tone of a show you're going to have seasons where everyone pretty much has to take a break. Like you can't have, like, obviously you have to, you have to maintain a really strong and a really deep narrative, but you can't, you can't go hard in the paint 365 days a year and, and keep people's attention, you know, that, cause I, I, I call it, or I justify it, I guess, as the, the uh, soap opera phenomenon, you know, like what, who got kidnapped today? um mystery of the week type mystery shit. of the week mystery yeah absolutely day, i guess yep. you'd call it um but also you get, quickly uh, r d department you edward james olmus was from yeah. season six of the day yeah. so that's who we were talking about yep had to know but when you get that many seasons you, you know there's some fans that you're gonna lose just because the show's gone on too long there's there's new fans that are coming in that's gonna be like okay now i have to binge five or six seasons of a show and then 
at, at least what the last couple of years have shown us, I think, is the last two, maybe the last three seasons, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but the last two seasons of a, a major series is what's r- truthfully going to make or break it. Absolutely. And Everything if, you do before, before doesn't really matter because uh, when you're coming to the penultimate season and then the final season, you're going to either drive people to go, man, it's one of the greatest stories I've ever watched. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe I got to witness and experience that or, and, and, and it's really interesting to note that Dexter and the final episode of breaking bad dropped on the same night. Mm-hmm. And we talk about Dexter in one very specific light because of how awful lumber Dex is, the decisions that were made, the whole hurricane drama and all that, which, you know, all the way back in the first episode of Journey into Comics, that was still very fresh. So I was still bitching and being very upset about it all the way back then. So now, you know, and you look at Breaking Bad and I know you're not a fan and 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 and, and that's a whole other conversation for a different but, podcast. But I have watched that season finale. I have watched it and it's incredible. The show, it's not for me, but you know, the way they ended that series, I mean, come on, man. Like it's like it's top notch. Yes, it's top notch. And then you and, look and at then you, go what? ahead. I was gonna I, say you were gonna say the same thing. You first. I know what you're Game gonna of say. Thrones? <laughs> yep, absolutely. It's just I mean, in the middle, man. It's kind oh, of the God. Same. <laughs> oh man. I mean, like, okay. I, I, everyone the last two years has shit on season eight of Game of Thrones. Okay. We're not, we're not going to spend the next two hours uh, complaining about how awful season eight of Game of Thrones was because I think there were positive things. We've, we've said that enough times. You take, you take C- Game of Thrones as a series, I think is the perfect example of what Dexter was, you know, like, or it's 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 on the same like wavelength i guess as 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 dexter as a series because season 1 started out slow but it got everybody hooked you know when spoiler alert when fucking ned stark gets decapitated like okay we're fucking in it to win it now i have to find out what happens um and then you get to season 8 and it's like okay we got some ba- some build up Why is he on a boat? What is happening? And my wife from the other room says the ending sucked. <laughs> she How loves much Dexter. it resonates with people. We didn't watch Dexter together. I I like bits and pieced it like way after the fact. Um, but it's like, you know, my wife is yelling from the other room while we record this. That is the best, like the perfect representation of the Dexter fan base, it's not toxic like most of nerddom is. You know, like we've talked on this show a lot, it's the ending of that series was just textbook not good. (laughs) And uh, Peanut Gallery chimes in more. Uh, She says, it makes no, it made no sense. Well, it it, it delegitimized the entire series. Thank you. and 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 to jump back to... The excitingness that is the news that the original, uh, you know, pro- one of the original producers is coming back with the original writer, Michael C. Hall, returning as Dexter. All these things are good news. My hope is that some way, somehow they can configure undoing that eighth season, because if they listen and I'm just going to say it, if if after all this hype that we're rehyping for how much we are excited about the possibility of Dexter returning. If the first trailer is him still a lumberjack. And then like, he realizes he's going to go back to a life of crime. I will not fucking watch it. I will turn Mm -hmm. off because that's not what the story I want. The thing is, is that they got so far away from the original base and the original concept of Dexter that they lost what made it great. And it was always that he was almost caught almost but never caught so when you're in season eight and not to spoil this for those who are seven years too late and haven't watched it but (laughs) when when you're in season eight and dexter kills a dude in miami pd in front of batista and joey that is not the show that i'm talking about Mm -hmm. because he would not have done that he has a code he would have kept it secret i don't care how personal it is that deb is quote unquote dead and how awful do you treat the lady that plays Deborah Morgan giving her an off-screen death? Right. You didn't even give her enough juice to have a moment with Dex at the end there? 
I'm done with it. So undo that. Give me 10 episodes of something fresh that takes place. Shit, you could even undo season fucking seven for all I care, and I'd be okay with it. But, right. but to me, they have to fix and figure out how to get fans back because it was a very beloved series that had a total humongous Seinfeld-level misstep with their finale that drove fans away. And and here we are seven years later still upset about it. Well, and and, and, and as long-winded and, and, and as little sense as I normally make, what I was going to get to was the reason that I reacted very poorly to it is it's, it's reopening an old wound for me. And yes. it, it, it's giving it's giving me the the illusion of hope that it's it's going to right the wrongs of the past that it's that it's going to ignore season eight that that it, it's going to get back to what made the character unique and interesting to begin with because that's that's what it's you you said it perfectly there it, it's not the show that I want. Um, as far as him still being the lumberjack and, and all that bullshit, but the the show that that we as a fan base want is isn't anything. It's not like Star Wars where we're just complaining to complain. Like we, there was a very cut and dry narrative in the beginning. The character was fleshed out. It made sense. We just want that that character back. We want we want what made Dexter Dexter. And not some convoluted mystery of the week soap opera bullshit. Um, and and I I just have you know it's 2020 Nate, so I have a bad feeling about literally everything. Um, you know, and especially like I'm about to step re- outside of my front door. I better not re- have a bad feeling. <laughs> yeah, like reviving and giving us hope that that you know they're gonna they're gonna fix some stuff. You know, obviously it's not all bad in, in 2020. I mean. Um, we're getting a Snyder cut, so maybe maybe we shouldn't be so negative. But but man, I'm having a hard time uh, with this Dexter news. Not being like, you know what? I'm just not gonna watch it until 25 million other people watch it and tell me it's okay. And then you know, I and even then, so, so then you're gonna be skeptical. Yeah. And a lot of that, you know, I, I was gonna kind of chime in when you were talking about hope. I, I feel like you're Hawkeye. And fucking Endgame, just don't, don't, don't you dare give me hope. Yeah. Like I, mean, I can't even take hope right now because if I get fucking hopeful and you break me again, I don't think I'll come back from that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no really brilliant way to transition. There's a little bit of comic book news this week to talk about and stuff. And really, this is more me and you getting to catch up because we haven't been able to in a time. Uh, I will say that there's something else that, okay, besides the Dexter news, which I do think is huge. And, um, I have a whole st- uh, little side story before. Well, I'll actually, I'll do the little side story and then we'll jump forward. So okay. I'm glad that the Dexter news happened because let me take you back to, it would have been October of 2014, I do believe, or maybe it was October of 2013. It was after the series had ended. Mm-hmm. Um, Sarah and I had went to Vegas for this event called Ellis Mania. Jason Ellis was a famous dude on Sirius XM. He hosted these big events with these crazy fights like the electric dog collar fight and blindfolded uh, musical chair fight and all this crazy shit. So we're there hanging out, and I met this dude, Jason Cutno, and his lady, Stephanie, and they're great people who I ended up doing dabs with for the first time. And it was an amazing experience that totally changed me because I was like, oh, my God, concentrate THC. My brain is exploding. Right. I lost a whole day. So that's that's one thing. I lost the whole day. So that was the first time I tried dabs. So then the, the next day, it was like, oh, I got the hang of this. We're, like, hanging out. We go up to their room. We smoke a little bit. We go back. We go to the party, do all this other shit. Well, at some point, we ended up with one of the people who were actually on the Jason Ellis show, this guy named Raw Dog, Josh Richmond. Little Jewish guy. He's not really good at anything. And by not really good at anything, I mean literally he was awful at everything. Like he doesn't even ride a bike. So (laughs) we're telling him how to do the dab because he's never done it before. And he goes to do it. And like you're supposed to just like take the little, you know, wax, put it on the dab nail that's been heated up by a torch and just like slowly stirred around so that you can while you're sucking get the vapor he stabs it into the nail pen and starts like jerking it off violently like ah and jason's like you're gonna break my shit bro well his girlfriend is sitting over here and she's like this porn lady and not like like let me rephrase this a plus size model porn star actress, not just like a normal porn star. Um, not okay. that there's any discrimination, but it is important for the story that she was a little bit off and, 
and we actually learned through a lot of drama that happened on their radio show that she was a terrible person who like drugged somebody at this event and like whole Jesus. whole yeah it was it was crazy but while we're up there talking to this lady she tells us her uncle is an executive for showtime and that dexter is getting a movie next year and I'm just so glad in the interim that that was the biggest lie I ever heard because I was like, don't do a movie this close to the thing because it'll just be the lumberjack Dexter. And I don't want that. I don't ever want that. And it didn't happen. And here we are. And now there's Thank at least goodness. a little bit of hope. Totally. Now to talk about the other thing that I really wanted to chat with you about. That's not comic book and news related. My friend, I'm over here looking at you and I, I think that what color is your shirt? Uh, green. Yeah. Green is sus. Oh, oh, sorry. Green is us over there. He's definitely an imposter. I've been playing Among Us like crazy as of late. Uh, I didn't know that it was free on the phone, which is insane to me that it costs four ninety nine dollars to play on Steam, but $0 to play on mobile yeah, device. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I got real pissed because I hate the controls on the cell phone. Like, uh, you know, I got a, I got a new phone uh, like two days before Juno was born, and I was like, man, uh i need to fucking check out this among us game dave linder uh and and my little group of cronies we created a fucking among us uh like uh facebook messenger chat so i'm gonna add you to that here in just you a moment sh you should please do that because games are popping off all the time awesome. um yeah like i i instantly got addicted to it it's like really a fun game and it's very unique in uh, and and it's it's interesting to me because I actually played Secret Hitler first and it it's like a simpler video game Secret Hitler where instead of like the task of passing a bill is actually the task of doing something to keep your ship going and mm -hmm. I have a fucking absolute blast playing that game the only problem I run into is is that I just play public games so I run into a lot of people using really terrible racial slurs on the regular and I'm just like come on bro it's 2020 you can't be dropping that language I also run into people trying to hook up with people on among us and I'm like what what are you doing it's a video game knock it off and then my least favorite is people who are like like okay this this literally happened today in a game this person goes what's up y'all how old is everyone and you get like 17 13 25 33 okay reasonable this dude's like i'm 40 how's it going sweeties and i was like fucking pedo you are a fucking pedo and literally in the chat all just I did was fair but you know i how people are i mean oh, shit. I, you're right you are right but I just I really enjoy the game because you have to have that level of like, you know, undercoveredness. And I don't know how you guys play with your games, but I've watched other people play where they have like a discord chat going. And when it says Shh, you actually go silent, you don't talk. Everybody's muted or whatever. I think that's really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm, I'm I'm interested in, and excited to possibly get in some games with you guys because fuck. Yeah. So um, yeah. We haven't we haven't played a game for like a week just because everyone I think everybody's been so busy, um, but yeah like I think it's funny too like you, you get in different lobbies and like each lobby has like a color that they automatically suspect, you know like I played like ten or twelve games in a row, um, you know yellow is the color of my avatar, and like three out of the four of those like automatically yellow is sus and it's like where's the logic there i try to always do as many visual tasks when i'm not an imposter to like show people like oh, oh hey i got a weapons task i'm gonna go start shooting those asteroids that way you see the fucking guns firing and you can't assume me at all motherfucker mm -hmm. i will say however when i play imposter i'm a motherfucker <laughs> i play dirty hardcore oh yeah you're oxygen to o2 depleted come here oh you're dead i was i was just i don't know oh, i don't know anyways i love that game i'm excited to play it with you ty as far as comic book news is concerned and stuff you know there have been some headlines and stuff you missed you know mandalorian 2 is coming i'm sure you're you're really fucking jazzed about that i would yeah i, I saw i saw the uh the breakdown of um the release dates for each each episode uh Skylar and i were talking about that earlier so i'm pretty pumped about that um 
you know, I don't, obviously I haven't been able to keep up with the show, but what do you, what do you, have you guys talked about uh, the rumors that were going around about Pedro Pascal and him, him leaving the show and all that jazz? I, we, I don't think we actually covered the possibility of him leaving the show. Uh, and I think privately, I only really had like one thought is if he's actually leaving the show, the only thing that's going to change is we'll never see Den take his helmet off again. Mm-hmm. Like, like That's it. Like, Cause that's really the only, like that and the voice and the voice we're in 2020, man, people are great at doing voice impressions. And that voice was just a low snarled voice. It's not, I mean, not that Pedro did a terrible job, but if there was any validity to the rumor, uh, it wouldn't have really been like a huge loss. However, with all the stuff that's come out recently and all the news, he's talking to media outlets because Wonder Woman's coming out soon. And he's talking about the Mandalorian with love and affection and talking about how much he's excited for the show and letting a little behind the scenes stories drop. It immediately pulled a red flag to me. And I said, there's no way this guy's gone. He didn't walk away from a payday like that. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was very, very strange. Um, you know, and when I, I think that I was the first one of us to see it. And I sent it to you guys like immediately because it, it it made me concerned, not necessarily on whether or not he stays with the show. Um, because I think even if you did recast him, obviously there's more than one person that has wore the armor throughout season one anyway. Um, you know, he's Pedro Prescott is primarily a voice actor. Uh, the way, the way that it's um, kind of been laid out, uh, at least from the stuff that I've read. So um, it would be really, like you said, it'd be really, really easy to kind of swerve to the right or the left a little bit, but maintain that voice. Um, and I think even even if you recast them, um, allow, and, and you had to take the helmet off again, I don't think it would really be an issue. Um, I... I I, I don't know. Would you cast a look alike or try to get somebody in his similar facial expression? I, I mean, or would it, do you think it just wouldn't matter because as fans, we would go, well, he's. T- I think, I think you would focus more on someone of similar build and not necessarily ethnicity, because I hate to say that. That's like, especially with the Mandalorians, that doesn't matter at all. Um, so just someone not necessarily a lookalike, but someone of similar build, I think would be the most important. Um, you know, do they have to have a mustache? No, who gives a shit, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's tough. What I was going to say was, is it made me nervous because if, if he went into, if he agreed to do the show, um, and there was a, communication breakdown somehow to where you know either there was uh like up front just like not enough discussion on like how much screen time he was gonna or how much uh time in the armor he was gonna have um you know things along those lines is it is it disney and marvel or disney and star wars and marvel and you know the whole conglomerate is it them being shystery business people and 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 not treating their people well uh or is it pedro pascal being a diva because the first couple things that i sent your way were all they were all written from that perspective that he was just being a total piece of shit hard to work with yeah hard to work with and you know you and i uh especially in the last year have talked about that a lot from the set of Marvel, Star Wars, DC, you know, the stuff with, um, uh, fucking, uh, God, Pattinson? Joss, Joss Whedon. Oh, Joss Whedon. Yeah. Cause I was going to say uh, Robert Pattinson recently, just there, I mean, the similar rumor with Pedro Pascal being a diva, this, there are similar rumors right now about, about Robert Pattinson not wanting to do any more Batmans. And this is a one and done deal, which I still don't believe is valid because and I know I'll, I'll, I'll preach it here. Like some sort of, fucking weirdo in a cult but like unless you see it on comicbook.com or on variety or on one of the major news outlets don't trust it as crucible we we are literally dealing with this rumor mill right now where you've got pedro pascal's allegedly leaving the mandalorian allegedly battinson's leaving 
the Batman movie. You've also got this rumor that will not fucking die about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Sony even came out and said, there's no truth to this. Let it go. If, 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 if there's going to be truth to this, you guys will know, trust me, because we will make an announcement. But until you hear it from Sony's mouth, there's no validity. So we got to yeah, just I was, be better. I was really, really impressed um, to see that so quickly. Or, you know, that's not really. I was impressed to see it at all from Sony, um, you know, because we had that rumor almost two full weeks, almost well, two, two and a half weeks, almost three full weeks. Um, you know, and, and obviously that just snowballs gets bigger and bigger. And the, and that, that rumor has been going along since the first, since fucking captain America winter soldier that, that they were going to do that. They were going to try and bring the Garfield and, and, um, Toby Maguire and Maguire's for, yeah, for, for, for spider verse stuff like way de- way down the line ago. So obviously the stuff with Jamie Foxx was like, okay, shit's getting real now. Um, you know, that just sounds like a smart business is- business decision to me. You've got somebody who is somewhat familiar with the character, has a desire to play the character. They've already done it once before. Allow and them he to knows do a that better Marvel job. Marvel will knock it out of the park. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and allow them to do a better job. You yeah. Know? So uh, I don't know. The, the, and, and not to retread ground that, that Brando and I have talked about a little bit because I think it is important that you get to voice your opinion on the Spider Verse stuff because, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch joining the cast is huge. Jamie Foxx joining this cast is huge. The, the reality that we are not getting the Jamie Foxx Electro that we got in Sony at all. He will not be blue. He is not going to look like that. It's not going to be some weird modern take on the ultimate version of Electro. We're probably going to get more of a classic Electro, which look at what they have done with all their previous villains, dude. Vulture, home run, Mysterio, Killed it. home run. Killed it. Like, here we are. Jamie Foxx is going to be Electro. Okay, sign me up. I don't even have to ask questions. I already know it's going to be great. Yeah, that's, Mysterio. That's, Mysterio might be the best on-screen iteration of a comic book character ever, in my opinion. Absolutely, without question. Just because they were able to find a very clever and brilliant way to execute his power, mm-hmm. which you know, even in the comics, they back in the day they had a hard time explaining his power. He was the guy who worked in movies who could like do technical effects, which okay, that's cool and all, but to some people, you're gonna fucking get the secret now with drones and shit you're like oh they're using modern technology making you use your brains you know i'm jazzed for it uh one thing one thing for sure that you know i'm as tired as anybody um with the whole just with the rumor mill being out of control um this this is some of that unpopular opinion uh coming coming out here i love the spider-verse as much as as much as anybody spider-man is one of the, is, is the most incredible character and most important character in comic book history in my opinion sorry batman sorry superman but nobody brings more new comic book uh fans to comic to, to comic books than spider-man i'm sorry especially from our generation you know with the animated series and all the shit that happened Spider-Man is the guy. So the the Spider-Verse allows everybody to have their Spider-Man, which is which is incredible. You know, before that we just had like Ben Riley Spider-Man and 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 shit like that. So Spider-Man is one of those unique characters that everybody can have the one that they like the best. Okay, that's the good stuff. <laughs> the bad stuff is I am so fucking tired of hearing about Spider-Man. I want to gouge my eyes out. Not everything is... has... Go ahead. No, 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 no. You you continue your rage mode. Not everything has to be Spider-Verse related. Not everything has to be Spider-Man related. Tom Holland, as much as I love him as Spider-Man and as much as I love him as Peter Parker... He does not need to be in every single goddamn Marvel movie. Give the guy a break. You are going to make him not want to play that character. And he is the best version of that character that we've ever had. Ever. (laughs) Like, 
full stop best version of him ever. And you know uh, what? The 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 Spider uh, Into the Spider Verse, uh, the animated movie, could not have been any better. Like it it, it was perfect. And it, how good does it feel for those directors and writers to have been cast out by Disney? Exactly. To turn around and use a property that essentially is in Disney's wheelhouse mm-hmm. to win a fucking Oscar. Right. So if 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 Marvel pushed a live action into the Spider Verse movie, it would be nothing other than a cash grab, and it would take. I think I personally think that it would take a lot of weight and validity away from that animated movie that came out, you know, a couple of years ago. Especially with the sequel being announced, and now and now people are being. Um, with 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 into the spider verse and then the uh ps4 spider-man game and now spider-man remastered with the with the miles morales like people are are not as focused on peter parker as the as much as they normally are and now everyone's like okay they've got their spider-man peter parker i want my spider-man miles morales and it's going to get to a point where it's a problem. I if think. They don't I, address I think. It. Yes. Well, and and I agree. And I actually think right now to to piggyback on what you're saying because it's it's brilliant. Uh, we already have somebody who I firmly believe, if they gave the opportunity to play Miles Morales, would literally hit a home run. And that's uh, actually I, he he might be your cousin. I'm not even sure, but Caleb Anderson McLaughlin. He played Lucas in Stranger Things. Oh shit. I think because his age, he's like 14 right now or so, 15 maybe. He's at the perfect age to play Miles to like, again, looking at you, uh, Tom Holland, kind of being the archetype here. But again, you have a kid who can play a little bit younger because he looks younger. You can set the story to grow at some point, have those two interact. It would be brilliant. And as fans, we're, you know, you said it best. People are like, I want my Spider-Man to be in the MCU. And we're getting an opportunity now as a fandom where Marvel's really being smart. You get Modoc, main villain in the Avengers game. Modoc's going to have his own animated series. You got all these other characters that they backdoor in a video game. Kamala Khan, great example. She's the main character of the Avengers game. She's getting a Disney Plus series. And then eventually a role in Captain Marvel and all this other stuff. So we're being, as fans, they're trying to give different avenues for people to learn about these characters, to fall mm-hmm. in love with these characters. So when they do take it to the big screen, when they do say, hey, we're going to fucking finally give you uh, you know, a crazy-ass uh, Galactus story that you never expected to see, as fans, we are already ready, but the larger audience who doesn't know these characters start to familiarize which makes it a bigger event, which makes the moment bigger. And 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 I think we're driving to that. Um, now to touch a little bit on this, T.Y., have you recently heard kind of what the whole drama that's happening within Black Widow is concerned? As far as whether or not they should release it straight to Disney Plus? Well, apparently there is a literal single person lynch pen keeping any possibility of it going to the streaming service and while they don't have final say their say is important enough that if you made them angry it could actually fracture the mcu forever and that's kevin feige he's the man pushing for this to not be released that way and i think that he's still stuck in the mind frame of like things can go back to normal soon and um people are going to be accepting of movie theaters going back to how they were and the unfortunate truth is because of the virus, everything we've lived through this past seven months, it's just not viable. And he needs to, at least in my opinion, and I want to get your thoughts on this, he needs to really take a step back and say, listen, we have an opportunity here to really make some people happy by releasing something that's uh, at this point five months delayed. We don't know officially if it will drop in 2021 because who knows how much longer we're going to be in this shit. And right. all these false promises, give the fans what they want. You're going to give us WandaVision, maybe give us Black Widow too. But I know that Disney execs are angrily pushing to make this streamable. And I want to get your thoughts. So this is kind of a, a, a twofold thing here. Uh, the first part of, that, of it, I want to touch on the demise of modern cinema. <laughs> 
Sure. Uh, and, 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 I'll, and I'll be brief. Um, you read the headlines as much as anybody did uh, when No Time to Die got delayed and then AMC's like, well, uh, we're closing the doors. See you later. <laughs> On our way to the bankruptcy office. <laughs> I don't... Obviously, I'm not a a um, I'm not a billion dollar corporation. If you uh, are, you're fucking hold out on me, bro. I'm yeah. mad. big uh, mad I, right now. I'm not a awful sus here. Uh, I'm oh. not a I'm not a I'm not a multi billion dollar corporation. I'm not a financial advisor representing a multi billion dollar corporation. Um, I find it really hard to believe, especially. You know, as this, as this has continued to go on, I find it really hard to believe that all these movie theater companies, especially the big ones, um, I, I find it really, really hard to believe that they can't come to some kind of agreement with 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 Disney, with Marvel, with whoever to say, you know, here's this contract. We will air this many movies for you each year, and you instead of us paying you to air your movie, you pay us. Because that's that's one thing that I've always thought is really backwards in the industry is AMC Regal. They they have to pay the movie studio to purchase the rights to air that movie. It should be the other way. The movie studio should be paying the movie theater corporations to air their shit and how i mean listen and how much smarter would that be because you've got okay so let's say i'm this entity amc your warner brothers you come up to me you go hey here's the deal i'm gonna pay you two thousand dollars for every screen that you air the snyder cut because we're gonna surprise release it in theaters mm-hmm. as well and for every screen that you do that it's two thousand dollars um just in the contract lifetime cycle which means pittance literally pennies off the dollar for them to you're you're funding a a a, a, a theater to stay open mm-hmm. which again is going to lower the cost of admission it's going to probably lower a little bit of that concession price drive more people into your business it's a better business model honestly i think i think so for sure well and you got you have places like in my hometown the lorraine theater will never show a new movie again because it literally costs too much money and they will mm-hmm. never make the back end on it right so you have these amazing vintage theaters that are sitting going to waste or being used as community spaces instead of being an opportunity to really bring the community together for a real purpose and yeah i um i agree with you on that which i will say this as far as the the the, the smaller town or the the privately owned theaters um the communities that have stood by those and that have kept those open and that have, have stood strong and said, this business is a part of our community and we're not going to let the the doors to the th- these theaters get boarded up, you know, golf clap to you because movie theaters have been around for, you know, a hundred years. We don't, we as a, a society don't go to as many movies as they did in uh, 1934. Uh, you know, in 1934, they were going like two or three times a week to the movies because you know that was that was their uh, that was their medium of entertainment. The and movie it was the- cheap. Yep, the movie theater industry survived the advent of television. It survived. Uh, home movies, VCRs, uh, beta tapes, DVDs, Blu-rays. Cell phones. Cell phones, video games. The movie theater industry has survived all of that. The movie theater industry needs to not be greedy. The movie industry as a whole needs to not be, they need to focus on not being as greedy if they want to stay around. Because... You know, the big, the Warner Brothers, the Marvel, or the Disneys, they're not going to let go of any cash flow. They're just not going to. Um, especially now, you know, with the stuff coming out of Disney here lately, that they're doubling down on their 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 focus on streaming, um, which, you know, anybody that's in our position has said that for for four or five years now, that that, that, that eventually is what it's going to be. Um there's still a lot of people like me that want to go to the movie theaters and watch a movie. 
And I think to, to satisfy everybody, you, you alter your business model a little bit and why not just do both? release it re release it on my tv it's right there if i want if i want to stream it to my tv give me the option if i want to go to them if i want to take the risk if i'm willing to take the risk why not just let me go to the movie theaters and watch it like okay. this is one of those things that i don't understand why it's so difficult i think that they would uh you know uh that's breaking news on the podcast that we'll be able to cover here in a minute about uh michael b jordan i literally just got a crazy email i'll talk about that in a second but as far as the movie theater is concerned uh, and the industry you're right they're very greedy uh con direct to consumer is the wave of the future uh look at carvana look at all these mm -hmm. other uh, other things that are i'm at home i grab this fucking nifty device I pop in the information I want, I push a button and it comes to me. That is the now that is our society. People want the now, they want it immediate. And you're right, I would much prefer a movie take it two years and change, and I'm saying like three extra months to come out, mm -hmm. in order for it to be simultaneously released three different ways. It's streaming on all your devices if you have the thing and you might maybe you pay a premium, maybe you don't. You can go to the theater to see it, which, Again, a thing maybe now what we need to do is remove like 50% of seats like the snapping actually happened, baby. The, the snap happens and 50% of all the seats in the theaters go away and there's six feet distance. And then maybe they have a couple section where there's like a couple's section or something or family section. And then the third and final option is the home movie release, Blu-ray, 4K, whatever. Release it all on the same day because here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the theater as a fan. I'm going to see your fucking movie on the big screen. It's going to make me want the movie. I'm going to want to digest it, dissect it, break it down further. I'll drive right to fucking Walmart or Meyer or Target or whatever. Go to the section that has the Blu-rays. Grab your Black Widow copy that just came out the same day that it dropped digitally. Have it. And then maybe I'm traveling, and I didn't bring my Blu-ray copy, but I still have Disney+. Plus. I can just watch it there too. See, you're giving the consumer the option to, to consume more. And that's really what they were talking about in this press release with Disney. Giving the consumer an option to consume more. That's what their new plan is. And I think it's actually brilliant because we need it, especially in this time where there's so much uncertainty, so much darkness. Um, any any light or hope is gonna be is gonna be good. Now, Tyler, go ahead. Real quick, there's one other positive that I think. Uh, sure. Again, the theme of, of 2020, you know, amidst all this negativity is I'm going to call it the avatar effect, right? So in 2010 or 2009, 2009, you know, everybody in the world fucking blew avatar. Avatar blew us all out of the water. You know, it was, it was the next Titanic. Everybody had to see it. I saw it four times. Um, I think it was one of Skylar and I's first dates. Aww. We went and saw fucking Avatar. Yeah, like Avatar, Avatar the movie. I love it. It means a lot to me. It's one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time. Don't need to go down that road. Um, we were told almost immediately that James Cameron has a trilogy in mind, and the two sequels are going to start production like immediately. I actually want to not to correct you, but I want to say that the second one is done. Like oh yeah, they are yeah. In yeah, I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> so no, 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 you're right. So they so they tell us that like right out of the gate, you know, it was like six or eight months after Avatar aired. I wanted James Cameron says I want to do a trilogy. This is what I have in mind. Um, you know. I'm shooting for, that was 2009, so at that time, I think he was shooting for 2012, 2013 for Avatar 2, and then it gets delayed, and it gets delayed, and it's, it gets delayed. <laughs> this is the year 2020. Avatar came out 11 years ago. Avatar 2, production has wrapped. It's done. Or, or at least, you know, ready to put the finishing touches on. Avatar 3 is almost done. Like they have what? been film they yeah, they've been filming they both movies have been in production simultaneously. That's actually so, kind of smart. That's almost the like Lord of the Rings approach. Yeah, it's incredibly smart. So from what I've read, and obviously, you know, it's not I haven't it's not directly out of James Cameron's mouth, but everything that I've read online says that Avatar 2 
production's done. It's it's done so. It's 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 not ready to hit the theaters, but it's the movie is done. And Avatar 3 production is pretty much done. You know, they I can't remember what phase that they were going into, but but essentially it's done also. Um if if I am willing to wait 11 plus years for a movie, I think we as a fan base can and, and this applies to video games and books and, and everything else, TV shows. I think if I'm if I'm willing to wait 11 years to watch a sequel to a movie, I think that we can delay movies and video games and then the world not end, no pun intended there, uh, hey. to have a more finished product. And I, 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 Absolutely. Say, I say this because of Black Widow. If, if they would have said in January, hey, we're going to delay Black Widow to September because there's a couple things that we really wanted to accomplish in post-production. We couldn't really get it done. We had to go this route. The movie will be better because of it. Then, then just do it. And, and Brando and I have talked about this a lot too. There's some of those things where it's like, don't even tell me, just do it. Yeah, I don't need to know that the movie is getting delayed, but I also don't even need to know the movie's coming out until you have it more solidified. Don't well, tease me. And I, I specifically mean what they did to, to Solo. Don't tell me that you're going to reshoot the entire movie. I don't want to know that. Just say, just say the movie is delayed because we need to clean up the production. You'll love it in September of 2020. And then if you say that delay it two more times, three more times. I, if they're not going to release Black Widow on home video today, I don't care. I'm willing, you and I went through every stage of emotion when it comes to that movie. We're not excited. We're not excited. We're not excited. Hey, we might be a little bit excited. That trailer came out and holy fuck, we pie, were excited. Pie, pie, see, pie, pie, pie. We, were, we were excited to see the movie because it, it legitimately looks good. Don't, don't tread on the, 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 the hype train that you have created for the movie just because you think that you're going to make, you know, $10,000 more. You're going to lose $10,000 in profit by releasing it on Disney plus. If you don't, then don't, but, but make a decision. And this is one of those things where, you know, as, 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 as nerds, We've all had this admiration for Kevin Feige for a long time. Kevin Feige is a businessman, and we need to not forget that. He would not be doing this. He would not be that linchpin uh, holding up Black Widow if he wasn't a businessman. We need to not forget that moving forward. Correct, and he's done everything in his career to kind of position himself to have this linchpin power mm -hmm. because he's seen how Marvel – although it's a very serious entity has not necessarily been taken seriously by Hollywood until the, the more recent times. So when you look at black widow delay is not coming out, you said it, you know, no emotion, not excited to, to starting to have a little bit of hype, you know, then we got the, you know, the end game stuff where you're like, Oh wow, she's dead. So this is really gonna, this right. is really gonna like make it kind of like important. Then we like you see the trailer, there's excitement there. You have to, to tweak and fine tune this movie to a point where there should be zero issues, zero wrong with it. That was incredible to witness that throw catch sequence happen for those watching on the podcast. Just watch them catch that. That was amazing. Now, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to get about. super. I'm sorry to get super long winded no. about it, but you know, especially with with the pandemic stuff and and all the billionaires that 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 their fortunes have increased by literal billions. It's like, it's frustrating when, you know, I'm willing to devote my time, my personal time that I have a finite amount of to enjoy this product at now, I think a reasonable price. I took Ruby. We, we drove up to the movie theaters last week. We rolled in there and I said, you know what? I'm going to run inside real quick. I'm going to get a pop. We're going to go inside and get a popcorn. I spent five bucks on a large popcorn and that is the cheapest fucking popcorn at a movie theater that I've ever bought. And I was like, you know what? If if they would air a kid's movie or something, you know, I might take a day off of work when there's hardly anybody here. I might cruise up, take my kid to a movie, and then it's like, 
AMC Regal, like, nope, we got to close our doors because we can't afford to operate. You have price gouged us for fucking 25 years. And now, and now you're bitching about having to release a movie on home video. What the hell is going on? Well, they've totally screwed the pooch. And um, in the in the words of that guy from uh, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, they shouldn't have overextended themselves. <sighs> you know? Yeah. You shouldn't have overextended yourselves. And then he gets punched out by tombs. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Tyler, breaking news here, uh, just to quickly thrust it into another direction, because we could literally sit here for weeks and 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 – and back and forth ourselves about what they should do with Black Widow. I ultimately do hope they release it uh, sooner rather than later. I do I too. I really it do. It would be a breath of fresh air for everybody. Um, I just worry, though, now, one thing they could do is release it digitally now and then say, listen, when coronavirus isn't a drama, we have a vaccine, things are going to go back to some semblance of normalcy. The summer of 2021 is going to be the movie season. Yeah. And I'm what we're going to do it at AMC – any person that buys a ticket to a movie, you get a second movie on us. So you can do a double feature at any point in the day. You know how many people would bring their significant others and just go tandem movie watch? Oh, we're going to go yeah. see Black Widow, and then we're going to go watch No Time to Die. Or we're going to go see fucking Tenet and then turn around and go see Black Widow. Mm -hmm. People would be interested in that. And sure, you're cutting your prices down a little bit. But at this point, it's the experience of being in a theater and sharing that with other people that we're paying for more than actually experiencing the content. And that's what we need to remember. Right. So here's the breaking news. And I don't know if you saw this yet, but uh, Michael B. Jordan has officially um, made a pretty big splash announcing Friday afternoon. He is going to produce a feature of a static shock film. Oh, I did see that. And a uh, quote from THR, the Hollywood reporter says, uh, I'm proud to be part of building a new universe centered around black superheroes. Our community deserves that. Outlier Society is committed to bringing, a, uh, bringing to life diverse comic book content across all platforms, so we are excited to partner with Reggie and Warner Brothers on this initial step. Hmm. So this I mean, is, uh, yeah. I think it's incredible. You know, we, we've talked a lot about how, uh, you know, Michael B. Jordan, it goes without saying, but, you know, he's obviously one of the, the, the biggest stars in Hollywood, and, and uh, you know, him as Killmonger was fantastic. Um, we need more, like, I don't know. Did you watch Static Shock as a kid? I did not. It was a little bit, uh, after me. I was, yeah. I was already a little bit, I think I was out of high school when that dropped or, or nearly out of high school. So it wasn't I, something that was on my radar. I remember watching Static Shock and it being, a, you know, an entertaining show, but it's like, there's going to be a lot of people when this comes out that there's so much nostalgia um, you know, along the same lines as, as like, like Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man was, was the nineties, nineties kids superhero. And then I think that's why so many of us have so much, uh, such a deep and passionate love for the character is, you know, he, he that, that's, that was his prime. Um, you know, static shock, obviously not Spider-Man, not anything even remotely close, but you know, it's something fresh. It's something new. It'll hit the nostalgia factor for a lot of people. And, you know, Michael B. Jordan's fantastic. So what are we not going to love about this? Absolutely. Now, my, my curious question is there was a rumor about two years ago, and we might have covered it on the show back then. Uh, there was somebody initially scribed to be playing the role of Static Shock, and I don't know if that's going to still pan out, but allegedly Jaden Smith mm, was yeah, I rumored remember that. to play that role. And, and I don't know if he's still going to have anything to do with this movie. He's obviously a little bit older now. But uh, that being said, this is a great first initial step. I also love that Michael B. Jordan is kind of getting a second life at superheroes thanks to Marvel, mm -hmm. which is then allowing him to step into a producer role and help DC. It's also allowing him to kind of carry the torch and legacy of Chadwick Boseman in a really honorable way and, and bring – um, representation to people who feel underrepresented in this world, and I, I, I really am. I'm really excited uh, to see, first of all, what it even looks like, how it turns out, but to also see what what the story is that they come up with and how uh, how captivating they can make it. Because uh, I'm I'm definitely intrigued. Uh, so yeah, uh, as far as that's concerned, I don't think uh, as far as Static Shock stuff, there's not really a whole lot left to discuss because it's just fresh news. 
But I do have one more bit of DC news. Did you hear about the Batman leak? No. Okay, so there's been a couple things, and 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 it's going to kind of encapsulate into one bigger arching thing. So there have been rumors that this Batman story is going to also kind of be a take on the long Halloween story from Batman back in the day. Okay. Um, and, 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 and some rumor and conjecture say it could be, it couldn't be. Well, we got a set pick and the set pick is the leak. And that leak turns into a dam being blown open because the leak shows some members of a party, a Halloween party, which is interesting enough. So we are kind of allu- alluding to that. This could be a Halloween movie. But who was on set in this Halloween scene but someone dressed up like Superman? Okay. Not to say they have their universes Superman, but to say in Pattinson's universe, he does exist somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whether they interact ever, probably not, maybe. But just to even have that little Easter egg that Superman is really in this world and not shying away from it just shows how connected DC and how committed DC is really to trying to, no matter what, tell the best story they can. Um, Not shying away from other heroes in your universe, even though traditionally speaking, Batman kind of plays in his own sandbox for the majority of the time until more recently when we've had the Justice League stuff. So I think that's pretty interesting. I don't know. Did you see the picture at all? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. So it's not, don't, you don't have to go rush to see it. Cause it's not like you're going to see something spectacular. It's literally okay. a bunch of people standing on set and Superman is kind of off in the distance. You can see the Cape and then the red S on his, on his Cape or the yellow okay. S on his red Cape. So interesting. The more interesting thing about the Batman stuff is that Colin Farrell doesn't look like Colin Farrell anymore in all these set pictures. Oh. If you've seen that. Wow. Yes, I have. Talk about some good stage makeup. Shit. They have him looking like a totally different person, and it's absolutely captivating. I'm really, really, I would say jazzed, probably, to Mm -hmm. to see the Batman. I don't know. You know, it did get delayed a little bit. No Time to Die got delayed a a little bit. So that's kind of news to cover, too, that the Batman was, I think, delayed. Did they say 2022, or is it late 2021, like end of year 2020? I, I think that. Yeah. If, if you're smart, just release it on Halloween. If it's a Halloween kind of based movie, just go for it. Make it a Halloween flick, man. You'll get people in droves. And it's a Batman flick, right. home run, home run for sure. Um, but I don't really know, man. Is there anything else we need to uh, to dive into before we get out of here? No, nah, man, I'm good. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. And I also want to quickly say before we get out of here how much we love and appreciate our other co-host, Brando, although he is – not physically on the screen right now. He technically is on the call with us right yep. now because he tried to walk me through and help me set up the, the show without him being present. He's got some stuff he's taking care of, wants to take a couple weeks off. Totally understand. And uh, that being said, I had to run the show. So he and I linked up early. We started working on it. We literally physically could not make it work on my computer and I just like kind of sheepishly put my head down and I said, um, Brando, I, I, I don't want to like encumber you, but uh, could you like run the show while not being on the show and, and, and be there? And actually, he looks like he's making a little bit of an appearance here. Secret, I don't think you're going to see him on the actual podcast, but we can physically see him on our screens right now. But it was a it was a really awesome thing for him to to be here in spirit. It was it was kind of like Among Us, where there was a ghost that we couldn't talk to during the thing because we were the two crew members still alive roaming around. And um, yellow is definitely sus. But I think that's going to do it for this week. T.Y., is there anything else you want to add before we dive out of here? No, man, I'm good. All right, folks. Well, as always, you know where to check out the show on all the different podcasting platforms, Apple Music, Google Play, Podbean, Spotify, CastBox, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, many others. Search Journey Into Comics Network. Get us at journeyintocomics.com where you can get the archives of all the different shows on our amazing network. I think that's going to do it. This has been Journey Into Comics 318. No clue what we're going to call this one, baby. I've been Nate. I've been T.Y. And as always, folks, pop your caps back and fill your brains with shit. Later, guys.